Hello and welcome to this video which I've entitled My Last Dicksmith Kit. Dicksmith was very instrumental in getting me into electronics and one of the things they did very well was to make these sorts of kits where there are uh, a simple circuit, uh, sometimes there's schematics bundled in, um, other times there's not, but basically just a bundle of components and a PCB which is normally quite easy to do, may only take a few minutes up to a few hours, but since Dick Smith has changed from being Dick Smith Electronics to Dick Smith, they've stopped selling components and kits altogether. I found this one lying in my drawer from a while back. This one actually comes from when I was in high school, but it looks like the school has purchased it long before uh, Dick Smith had changed their branding. So this one is actually quite old in terms of its, um, its logos and its colors. It's probably one of the oldest kits that I have ever seen. Uh, this one in particular seems to be the simplest one too, which is the uh, flashing brooch which is uh, basically a ba uh, basic A-stable multivibrator circuit uh, consisting of two BJTs, two capacitors, four resistors and a single LED. So it's not really a challenge, but that being said, this is part of their introductory series which they called Funway into Electronics and this is part of their second volume. And the Funway kits were always very inexpensive to get parents to buy these kits for their kids and so that they're not too difficult for the kids to attempt either. And it came with an illustrated book. Unfortunately I gave mine away which has all of the information, say schematics and um, an information on how to construct it. But it also had quite a lot of useful theory which taught you exactly why the circuits operated as they did. So you could end up learning a little bit about analog electronics that way. Now there is a little disclaimer card, um, I'm not sure if you can read that, but basically it's saying that if you're going to have trouble, well it may not be worth getting them to look at it because the labour costs are quite expensive. And there's also a feedback, a quality control card. So inside we've got the basic PCB, or a single sided PCB, no fancy things like silk screening or solder resist. And we've got a bag of components which I'm just tearing apart unceremoniously here. So we've got our LED battery snap, uh, two BJTs, uh, two tantalum capacitors, tantalum ones aren't very common anymore, uh, four resistors, and a little bit of solder. Now, I was pretty much ready to get started. I was in two minds whether to even undo this kit because it's actually got quite a bit of a place in my heart. as. Uh, as I'm sure those that have lived and built these Dick Smith kits before might understand. I've been warming up my iron, ready to get this one over and done with. So let's see. Um, true to form, the iron that I've got is one of those cheapy $5 irons that you know everyone starts off with, with the exception that I put a weller tip on mine. Um, it's interesting because it's still the only iron I use, it's the only iron I need. So let's get started in constructing the kit. Now it's going to be a little bit difficult without the schematic, but I think I can work it out. Um, normally it's best just to identify your components. Sometimes, you know, if you're taking it leisurely, you just write down the component values on the side. But I'm just going to go right ahead and stick the resistors in where I feel that they are uh, best positioned. I think I still know this kit off the top of my head. But if it doesn't work well, then tough. But yeah, a lot of common, um, a lot of common issues cropped up during, uh, say, building these kits. Things like overheating traces and these boards. The traces would just lift right off the boards. This particular board itself is an early revision of the board. You can tell by the curved traces on it. A lot of the later revision boards actually had straight traces as they were all computer designed. So I'm sure this one's probably before that. Um, some of them, I think it was uh, RCS Electronics or some, some guys with a very similar name that was, um, that was actually fabricating these boards in Australia. So everything, um, well, the board at least, was uh, Australian made. Uh, definitely a bit of an interesting tidbit. Uh, to know. So that resistor goes there. Interestingly in this kit, it's basically a flash. It can be used to flash two LEDs, but um, the way that Dick Smith had done it was they only provided you one LED. 
Now, I think this is an enterprising uh, marketing strategy because it allows you uh, a good reason to go back to your local Dick Smith, maybe to you know get that last LED. And um, doing so would mean more business for Dick Smith, and you might actually buy a second kit, who knows? So here we go, let's just tin the tip and clean it off. And let's get started. So all up, hopefully we'll be done in five minutes or less. Yeah, the solder's not taking too well to the legs, but yeah, none of the new rose stuff here. This is all uh, leaded solder. It smells quite nice as well. I'm sure if you've done any uh, amount of soldering, you'll appreciate the unique smell of solder, it's probably not good for you but it definitely brings back a lot of memories for me um, I've had a lot of experience building many of the Funway 2 series kits and uh, even some of the um, silicon chip ones which you'll find in the magazines it's interesting because while Dick Smith hasn't been doing these kits anymore JCAR still has their clone of the uh, Funway series and they call their short circuits. Now I don't know whether that's a um, whether that's a cruel pun to make but I'm sure many beginners may inadvertently produce short circuits. I don't have any side cutters handy so I'm just going to use a nail clipper that's you know just as good of a substitute. I've definitely done this more than once. So I just clip the legs off can see um, it's a bit difficult to solder to these old components I don't know maybe the legs themselves are slightly more oxidized than would otherwise be the case um, depending on how pedantic you are you may even um, file off or uh, otherwise clean the legs before you insert them into your board but I'm not someone who takes that much care not normally so let's just put that wire link in. This wire link just basically substitutes the LED that was not provided in the kit. This is only one LED provided. There's a circular cutout on this particular board which um, if you'd like to make it into a brooch as, uh, as the name would suggest you would cut along the circular lines and that would allow you to get a, a nice shaped um, brooch. So just clip those legs off. You can see I'm installing the shorter components first and this is a very handy tip for those who haven't built these things before. Um, you know nowadays it's just so easy to get say Arduinos and Arduino shields which you can just plug together um, but really uh, this is where it all starts. It starts with you soldering something up and so if you haven't ever done this before uh, the other important thing while playing tantalum capacitors, make sure you get them in the right way. If you get them in the wrong way and reverse polarize them, they have a nasty habit of blowing up. So that's a bit of information for uh, for viewers at home. Anyhow, so I'm just getting the tantalum capacitors in. Um, but yeah, normally short components first, which will make it easy, especially if you have no helping hands or anything else you just say resting it on the table like I am um, it just makes it easier to solder although that being said you should secure the board as much as you can because that stops any potential for the component legs to move and uh, improves the quality of the joint see uh, I'm doing a pretty average job if I was a bit more bothered maybe maybe I could solder a little bit more consistently but not having the solder resist really does make it a little bit difficult because as you heat the trace up the uh, solder actually wicks away following the trace itself so yeah another polarized component here the LED itself so got to just make sure we've got it the right way around. Uh, normally we leave semiconductors to the end because they're the most heat sensitive of them all and uh, we really don't want to spend too much time with the iron heating it up otherwise you may just kill it. 
So I'm just double checking, hold on, yes I've got it the right way around. Flat is on the negative side on the uh, LED and long leg is the positive. And I should really clean my tip there, that's not a nice looking tip. So oxidation on the tip actually reduces heat transfer so you don't get as nice of a joint or you may just get cold joints altogether. I've got a little bit of flux burning there, that's why I've got that black spot by the looks of it. It's important that when you're soldering you apply adequate heat not only to the trace itself but to the leg. If you actually apply the heat only to the trace you'll find that you'll actually lift the trace off the board and if you do a bad enough job of it you could end up uh, pretty much losing the board. So now we've got the two BJTs and the battery snap to go. I'm making good time here. Hopefully I'm not boring you to death. Uh, this tape would come off. You can see these are all packaged on tape. That's how you would uh, if you were mass manufacturing. Um, so they're being cut off a reel by the looks of it. So let's, let me just fit one BJT, solder it, clip it off and then fit the other one. So you can see they provided plenty of solder. I haven't had to use much of it at all. Um, so that's one BJT done. So as we normally say, try to keep it under 10 seconds for a component or maybe even three seconds if you can make it. If you're very, very um, pedantic about it, what you would do, you would do this all on an ESD protected workbench. You would probably put uh, heat sink clips on these legs to draw away the additional heat so you don't accidentally damage the transistor. But it's a cheap kit and uh, it really doesn't matter. They're actually quite hardy components that they've all chosen for the Funway series. That way the chance of being disappointed is much less. So you can see that there is a bit of thought there. And some of the um, some of the kit components actually do work with other members of the uh, of the series so that you can chain them up like Lego bricks and make something bigger and more wonderful out of it. So say if you get a universal timer, you can have this turn on and off at a given time. Or if you bundle it with, say, a capacitive switch, you can have that trigger off your timer. So it, it all, it, it's like an ecosystem. It's almost like what we've got today in terms of Arduinos and shields. But nowadays with the Arduinos and shields, you very rarely have to build anything. If you're lucky, you can just find what you need uh, pre-built. It's just a matter of throwing money at the problem. But that doesn't really teach you anything, does it? It may not teach you as much. That's really what I'm trying to say. So I really enjoyed these as a kid. You know, doing it today. I can't say I'm not enjoying it, but it is a bit trivial now. You'll notice that I didn't clean the tip there and I've got some oxide on there. Ah, but that's alright. Clip those off. Making a mess of my workbench, as you probably shouldn't. And there we go, we've got a kit done. Now, the uh, smoke test. Let's apply power and see what happens. Voila! It blinks. So there, we've uh, just completed my last Dick Smith electronics kit. It's a bit of a bittersweet ending.